Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. We are live. I'm joined today by Vincent Zerzolo and David Quinn from The Addiction. Thank you guys for being here. How's it going so far? Oh, you put a thumbs up. I like that. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, we're, we're happy to be here. Yes. Very happy to have you here as well. We were talking backstage that I feel like this stream is perfect timing. We've just come off the drop uh, that happened on Wednesday, and we have the exciting craft that is happening tomorrow morning. And so it's a good time for you guys to sort of uh, come <clears throat> hang out with us, uh, maybe answer some questions, and uh, talk more about the addiction comic. So my first, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to say before we even get started, I just want to, from David and myself, want to thank everybody out there who made the number two such a big success on the drop the other day. Uh, Magic, as you, you've been fantastic supporting us all along, and there goes my poster for the addiction. I thought I got that up there, nice. Um, but uh, the um, the love and and passion and and dedication that people had for the comic book came through with, with flying colors in the sense that you know people were talking about it, people were excited. I was watching the X um, uh, posts and seeing how many people were viewing it, and then of course. We sold out in 34 minutes, 5,000 pieces. And that was just, just amazing. 5,000 copies in 34 minutes was, so I, I had tears get... in my eyes that day. I really did. It was, it was emotional. I'm sorry I lied. I claimed it was 32 minutes. I was bragging. <laughs> we're humbled. We're humbled and we're grateful. And there's more to come. So stick with us if you enjoy it. I wanted to ask, um, I know that I was texting you, Vincent, a bit. Um, we tried to get you guys on Discord, and it, we tried, but Discord didn't update that morning. And so you were going to be on the drop show, and it, it didn't happen. Um, but you could see that everybody was there, really excited, um, just wanting to hear from you guys. So I'm glad we could at least do this as a makeup. And um, all of us on Discord, the moderators, are very sorry that that didn't happen, and it was such a headache. But... Um, <laughs> I was texting with you um, sort of that morning, but I want to know from you guys, like sort of what your live reactions were to seeing, you know, the the supply go down and down and it sell out so quickly and just the energy. And um, also, I know, Vincent, that you you got a nice little three digits. So I just wanted to kind of hear from your guys' point of view what, what that morning was like. Dave, you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm a huge fan of fans, hmm. you know. I rarely cosplay, although I do a pretty good Joker. Probably stages from my my biology. <laughs> um, but you know, I love cosplay because I feel like these people are dreaming in public, and I always talk to them and I always pose with them. I know Vincent does the same thing. I I just saw a great picture of Vincent, you know, hugging a Jack Skellington at a con. I mean, you know, I love fans of anything. Even my opera fans, right? It's not my music. I'm kind of a punk jazz guy. But, you know, I love fans. And, you know, when people are open with their passions and sharing their passions and creative with their passions, doing fan art, wearing a costume, buying things, sharing things, talking about things, even arguing about things. You know, when I was writing for Marvel, I would get into the thick of it with all the people that were like, you know, so-and-so ruined the Avengers. What do you mean ruined? Let's talk about what that really means, you know? You know, and it's like, I love to get into the thick of it with fans. So here we are with a, with a, uh, a thermometer showing us on our computer screens how people are um, responding to the book, um, purchasing multiple numbers and being a part of it and sharing it and responding to it. And, you know, we've gotten great, great questions from the VV fam. And we'll want more because there's gonna be a letters page in every print issue. If you haven't checked those out, please do. Um, so there's, there's a community going on and there's a relationship going on. And it's much more intimate than say, I, when I was reading you know, Dr. Stranger or Tomb of Dracula as a kid, and maybe I could write a comic to Marvel, or uh, write a write, sorry, write a letter to Marvel, but I wasn't gonna like you know have a chat with Marv Wolfman until I actually worked with him years later. 
we weren't going to like get online like we are now and and be engaged directly. So yeah. this give and take is is gives us so much energy for more creativity. For from for me, I was um, finishing up with the Discord and I had to run to a dentist appointment to get my cleaning done. And I'm on the train and the, the Wi-Fi on the train was actually working. So I'm watching and I'm trying to buy copies and I'm getting them slowly, but I'm getting all the comments and because uh, somebody else scooped them all up before I could get to them. But but then there was a point where I tried to buy one and I and it said we're going to have to process this in two hours. And then it's, it, when I got to the dentist, it was like, it's sold out. And I am was just mm. like, oh, my God, I, I knew it was going to. I had a really good feeling about it because of, of all the you know passionate fans we have. <clears throat> but then to actually see that happen and and in 34 minutes was I got to tell you, I was telling the dentist they, they, I was wearing my jacket that day for Yay. good luck. And I was in the dentist's office and the dentist and the hygienist was like, what's your jacket all about? And I'm telling the story like. Wow, that's what's the website? What that's really cool. I was like, yeah, we just sold out, and so I got the dentist interested, and um, it was it was just so exciting. Uh, I just I, I can't put into words how grateful we are to everybody out there. Uh, this is like a dream come true. I mean, David's had many successes in the comic book world as a writer. This is my first, and it is thrilling to have people um, enjoy it. And that was one of the best things I saw on X that were people who actually posted that they read it and really enjoyed the story. So I hope everybody out there, please read the comic book too. I mean, it, it's a really fun one. We pour, poured our hearts and souls into it. Claudia did some amazing artwork. We have mm. all these great comic artists doing covers for us. Um, Amanda Connor, who's been around uh, for quite some time. She's one of the best cover artists in the world. Um, uh, Robot Cat, who did his first cover for us, who's got a huge following on X. And, and that was really nice to see when he posted about it. And then, of course, uh, Andres Labrada, who's the only artist who will be doing a cover for, did a cover for number one, covered for number two, and will do a cover for number three. Um, and we're, uh, we're feverishly working on a lot of other stuff for the addiction, and we can't wait to share that with you as well. Yeah. Can I, we're can I say one more thing about meeting the Vivi fam? We, we love meeting the ones of you who we met in New York last October. Mm -hmm. um, we have big plans for New York again. And in between now and then, we'll be in San Diego. San Diego is absolutely huge. And by comparison to our hometown, New York, our presence will be um, significant, but a little bit smaller. Still, we're there. So come see us if you're at either one of those conventions for comics. And, and you'll get things there that you can't get anywhere else. And it's confirmed that the addiction has its own booth at San Diego as well, correct? Yes, we do. We will be in the artist side of the art, original art section of the convention, which is all the way on the left-hand side of the convention center. Uh, we'll have a booth number to share with you guys soon. Uh, but we have, a, we have a 10 by 10 booth. We'll be right next to the Metropolis art booth, original art booth, which is the first time my company is having an original art booth down on that side of the show. Mm, um, what's really exciting is uh, not only will... Uh, David and I be on hand, but also we're going to have Andres Labrada there. Uh, mm. He will be at the booth signing, and David and I will be there uh, on and off throughout the show signing. And we're also going to have one of the VV members who has become our unofficial ambassador, Kino, uh, Kiyo Shinobi, will be there as well, helping us out. And he's been terrific. And we're, we're organizing. One of the things you guys should know is we're going to be organizing right now the direct market number one. So all the number one issue, we showcase the New York City variants at New York Comic Con, which are limited editions. But the direct market that's going to go into comic book stores, the ordering is going to start the beginning of May and end at the end of May. So we're going to be doing a grassroots campaign for, with VV members where David and I are going to be sending a postcard, signed postcard to VV members who are going to go to their local comic shops, drop off these postcards, say, hey, don't forget to order the addiction number one to drive the numbers up so that we have a good following not only in the VV community, but also in comic stores and for the general public as well. So that's really exciting. Anybody out there who has any interest in being a part of that can uh, respond uh, to, uh, to can reach out to Kiyo Shinobi and, uh, on a variety of different social media channels. Yeah, or let me know and I can direct you if you're unfamiliar with Kiyo or need an introduction, I'm happy to help out as well. Thank um, you. I want to point out that um, the I'm in several group chats and a lot of those group chats have massive fans of yours and they pointed out how thrilled they were to see 
some love to the VV fam on what was it? The back page of addiction number two. You guys yes. have the, the collage of pictures, including some of the fam and meeting them at New York Comic Con. So that was really cool of you guys to sort of include us into your second comic, like as a community and, and, and highlight us. So just well, it's not, appreciate that. Believe me, it's not just PR when we say we're humbled and gratified and we love the VV fam because uh, it, it reminded me of my earliest, earliest days of comics. And I've said this a couple of times before, so sorry if you've heard, heard it before, but you know, it reminded me of the first response to uh, the Faust book, which was kind of new when it came out in the late eighties and uh, people grabbed it and they were rabid about talking to us about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that doesn't happen with everything you do. Some people just kind of collect or, Thank you kindly for signing their book, but this is different. And, you know, Vincent the other day on the uh, drop call described the uh, the long line of people and the fun people that we were engaging with and sending uh, our spokesmodels, our Nickies, mm -hmm. out to greet them and give them postcards and keep them occupied while they were waiting on a long, long line. And, you know, we love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. The So let's get into the crafting a little bit. So mm. the success of the drop, very exciting. Then this is the first time ever on the app that we're getting seven different covers for one singular comic. So another first for you guys. Yes. Like that was, that was I, I attribute like, you know, some of the success, uh, obviously the story and meeting, getting to know Vincent, like, you know, one of my favorite things about um, you talking about this comic is that it was this sort of lifelong passion and dream, and it was COVID that propelled you into actually making it happen. And I feel like that was something that really connected with people. But also, the, the first addiction was the first time that we ever got a um, digital and physical variant at the same time. And that made it really special to collectors of the app and people that are really into sort of like, you know, historical milestones. Um, and so now we have, this is the first time there's ever been seven covers. And uh, this this crafting is really interesting. So do you want to... So, yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Sure, I'd love to jump in. Let me just explain. So so first part of this, the seven covers. When I when I looked at what we had, <clears throat> and, and this kind of grew organically out of the, 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 the original number one covers with the VV red and VV blue that you have behind you and I have right one behind mm -hmm. me. But the whole idea here was, all right, so we, there are five usually, um, but I have a great way we could make seven. So we have three different Labrata covers, or the red, the blue, and the gold. And then we have one, um, the Amanda Connor cover and the Robot Cat covers, and then Vivi versions, which actually really fit perfectly. Like, like when, when you see the, the crafted versions tomorrow, you'll see that the logos just fit perfectly into those covers. And that was, you know, really neat for it, for it to happen that way. But getting into the, the crafting part of this, one of the things to note about this is I didn't really know what crafting was. And they sent an email, the VV people sent an email, hey, we're going to craft these, the two ultra rares. And I was like, I, at first I thought they meant in order to get them, you're going to have to burn two of your original number ones. And, I, and like, I'm a comic guy. I You don't burn comic books. You don't put them through the wood, the wood chipper. You know, you don't do that. <laughs> so I got a little nervous yeah. first and I said, I, I sent an email. hammer. <laughs> right. I sent an email back to them and I said, I said, as, what, what exactly does this mean? And, you know, I don't want to burn any comic books. Um, and, and so they explained it to me. It's like, no, you if you if you it's a it's a reward for having bought the earlier number ones and having the right ones and then being able to, to utilize them to buy these ultra rares, which I think is a great reward system uh, for for loyalty and for uh, vigorous buying. Mm -hmm. um, and. I, I know a lot of people wanted to know what the crafting was before the launch, but I didn't have that information. And Vivi has a way that they release information and they're doing it on Saturday. And I'm sure it's going to be very well received and people are going to enjoy it. And when you see these two other covers, you know, they're, they're plays on some of the covers you've seen already, but I think you'll get a kick out of them. We did get the info yesterday. So we know that we need the uncommon and the ultra rare covers in order to craft. And then uh, when you go to the craft and we've seen what the covers will look like, the, um, okay, great. the new ultra rare and the new secret rare, and that there's 250 editions of the ultra rare and 150 of the secret rare. 
which is in in the app if you've scrolled and looked at any of you know the the comic book collections is very very scarce mm -hmm. and it's going to be really hard um i mean people are going to be on their phones and laptops trying to craft these at, at 8 a.m my time um and there's people that have bought multiples that they they may not get the opportunity to, to craft more than one because it might be gone like that it's it's going to be really exciting to see how it plays out yeah yeah and and the other thing that was really cool for me at getting more involved in the uh vv app and buying my own addiction number ones thank you very much Magic. <laughs> thanks to everybody all the other guys who were there um helping with that um uh, slim and straight and uh, tactics and, and uh omegatron right mm -hmm. uh so um, was seeing that, you know, out of 7,500 copies, only about 400 or so were for sale. And the, 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 the ultra rares are selling at one time, I think over a hundred dollars, but they're hovering around the 80 to 90 range, which is really incredible. And then when you took a look at the, um, number twos in the aftermarket, the, the commons were selling a bit lower and that's understandable, but the, the, um, rares and ultra rares were selling for quite a bit higher, which is, it's, it's really extraordinary to see that because you know, that's like the, the day after a comic book comes out in a digital sense that they're going for, you know, five, six times what they were sold for the day before. And that's not a comic store owner gouging his loyal customers. Right. That's market. That's a market, a natural market, organic market marketplace thing that's happening. And that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I got a shout out. You brought up the the guys from um, uh, us meeting at uh, WonderCon. Wonder and... Uh, a couple of those guys did some heavy stacking already of addiction number two. I couldn't believe it. One guy got at 80, another guy 16, another guy 20. And one guy's telling me I needs to get more. And I'm like, oh my God, this is this is amazing for Yeah. It that was it was really special that we got to to have that lunch because those were definitely some of your biggest fans. So I I, I again appreciate you doing that with us. You know, I wish I hadn't ordered the burger because that was all I ate the rest of the day. <laughs> oh no! A thing. I should have gotten what you got, but but with all the guys, we all ordered burgers and fries, and that was that was it for me. I I was in bed last night going, oh, I can't eat another thing. But it was so much fun, and we did a bunch of interviews, and we talked, and we went and and we went to meet David Mack and tell him how much we loved his cover. That was really fun. Yeah. Well, let's be sure we um give you give you all like the heads up that we're perfectly willing to do the same thing at these two conventions we mentioned new york and and uh and san diego i think those are my only conventions but you know vincent I'll doesn't be at heroes con job, so he goes everywhere <laughs> yeah i do i'll be at heroes con in, in charlotte uh in uh, it's gonna be a father's day weekend in june um, I'm going to be at a little art convention uh, on the 21st here in Manhattan, and I'll also be at C2E2. Mm. And at the end, the last weekend of April, I'll be in Chicago at C2E2. So if there are any VV fam uh, going mm. to that show, please stop on by. I'd love to say hello, and, and uh, maybe we can take a couple of pictures together. Uh, that's cool. Hey, Dr. Fuse. Dr. Fuse, Fuse you rock. Fuse, Fuse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, speaking of places where you can meet us, um, What's up, Slim? I, I'll, I'll give you the dates later because they're just firming up now. But the um, the trade paperback of the 500-page Faust Omnibus is coming out in May. And I have at least two store signings in New York's Forbidden Planet and probably maybe uh, Baltimore area's uh, Third Eye. It's, a, it's not a big tour. It's just hitting a couple of friends and signing books for people in cities that I'm close to. But... Uh, I'll make sure you guys know. Oh, that's cool. great. Yeah, they appreciate that. So I do actually on this topic have um, a question from the community and I have uh, another question after that. Um, so there's people in the community going to San Diego. Uh, we genuinely hope whatever sort of events after the con that we do, like you guys, it's an open invitation. We'd love you to be able to come mm -hmm. if you have the availability. Um, I don't know if there will be like an official VV party or not, um, but it would be great if there is, if you guys could attend. Um, there is some people that are trying to put together an early screening of seeing Deadpool 3 and renting out an entire theater um, just for like VV fam, if we can get enough people that want to go. Um, the only problem is right now it looks like it's Thursday at 2, which is when the con mm. is happening. Like, I don't even know that I can go, but... If it fit into your schedules, the, the invitation was there and they were hoping you might. Oh, well, 
<laughs> I can't. I, I can tell you, I, there's no way I can leave a convention on Thursday at two. Yeah. But having said that, I wish I could. Uh, if it's in the evening, any of those nights, uh, I would love to go. Dave. Awesome. <laughs> or at breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we'll go we for. Will a... eating, we'll be eating breakfast. If <laughs> we, can, we can watch the, the movie at six a.m. That sounds fun. <laughs> wow, but, that'd um... be really great. Uh, here's a more detailed question. Um, okay. I wanted to ask if you could have them go over a little bit more about the collab with the artists doing these variant covers, how long it took and what the process was for each work. Good question. I I'll, I'll pass it to Vincent. He is definitely our cover expert. So, so first of all, I just want to let people understand that, um, I have no official training as an art director in any way, shape, or form, but I've been buying and selling comic books since I was a little kid. And I know which covers grabbed me when I went to comic stores. And I know what vintage comic books sell uh, because of their covers. So my eye is always, while you can't judge a book by its cover, in comic books, many times, oftentimes you do. And we wanted to make covers that would appeal to different people for different reasons. So I'll give you a couple of the backstories. Um, first one is Andres Labrada who I met at a Miami con last year, super nice guy walks up to me with his comic book called Kashoho coffee shop of horrors. And I opened, I, he says, do you have a comic, a comic book store? Would you like to carry my comic? I said, I don't, but I'd love to see it. I opened it up and there's a picture of a character that looks so similar to Nikki. And I loved his manga style. And I said to him, you know, uh, I think we're going to work together. I, I really like what you're doing here. And would you be interested in doing a cover for us? And he was on board and we started working for a very collaborative, very fresh, uh, modern style, uh, Amera manga is what I call it. It's like an American style mm. manga. And I love, mm -hmm. I love, and Andres Labrada has been just an incredible pleasure to work with. He's very Second sweet. person. Yeah, he's great. Second person is Amanda Connor. Now I'm friends with Jimmy Palmiotti for over 30 years and Amanda Connor for as long as they think they've been together. Um, and I reached out to Jimmy, uh, last year over the summer and I asked if they would by any chance have some time to do a cover. It would really mean a lot. And they were so gracious and so amazing the way they collaborated. And I talked to Jim and he asked me what kind of stuff do I like and how we could do this and what ideas I had. And I gave that to them. And David and I, uh, you know, brainstormed a bit and came up with some ideas as well. And then we gave it to them and uh, they came up with this great cover um, with Nikki, who has, has just dosed the whole gang of uh, Mr. Licorice and Bet and his, um, his henchmen. And so, uh, and Enzo's in the background looking up adoringly. Uh, we love that cover and it's got a very different feel and it's very classic Amanda Connor and kind of telling this, uh, cute story, but, but, but also really, really cool. And, uh, Jimmy did the color work, which I, I didn't even know that was happening. I thought we were going to have to find a colorist. So that was amazing. And, and, and just, again, consummate professionals, super nice people, and just incredibly talented. Then, uh, <laughs> Robot Cat. And, uh, that's one of my favorite stories because... I'm, I'm constantly looking for the right artists for us. And there, there are some great artists out there that I don't think are right for the addiction, no matter how good an artist they are. Um, but I'm at C2E2 last year in Chicago and I'm walking around the entire show, uh, the entire artist alley, which is hundreds of artists. Uh, everyone from A-list artists to beginning uh, independent people who are just trying to get their work out there. And I see this booth filled with these posters of little anime girls and kind of sexy poses and drink, eating pizza or, or a hamburger and rather scantily clad. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is, there was one little girl called like a shark girl. I think it's called Druna. And, and, and it's this little girl holding a stuffed shark, but she's got a shark tail. And then the shark's teeth are pointed and her little teeth are pointed too. And it's adorable. And I walk up to the artist and I say, Hey man, I love your work. Um, what's your name? And he looks up at me and he goes, my name is Robot Cat. And I was like, you're hired. <laughs> it's like, this is your, your artwork and your name is Robot Cat. This is awesome. This is great. So I asked him if he ever did comic book work. He said, no. I said, he said, I'm not really interested in doing stories. I said, no, 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 no. I want you to do a cover. And he goes, I could do a cover. And we started collaborating and working on it and told him what I wanted him to do. I wanted to incorporate that sexy kind of anime kawaii uh, mm -hmm. girl as Bette Noir. And then we also wanted to have this outlandish Mr. Licorice. And I wanted it to be their first full cover appearance. 
And he did this beautiful black and white. Yeah, exactly, David. He did this beautiful black and white for us. And then I asked him to color it. And he came in with colors that kind of hid a lot of the great detail work that he did. And so instead of going with that, I went back and I talked to David, my wife, Josephine, um, uh, Micah, who's an art director here at, um, uh, for consignments here at, at Metropolis and Comic Connect, and our vice president of the company, uh, you guys know him as Mondo, um, but uh, Andrew Wilson. And everybody came back with different points. I took those and incorporated them into what I was thinking, made a little laundry list for Robot Cat, sent it back to him, and he came back to us with this cover, which is extraordinary. I love it. In fact, he then sent me the original uh, artwork for it. And I just thought it was so cool. Like most comic book artists, traditional comic book artists, would never think to just draw in gold on, on anywhere on the cover. It'd just be black and white. And here you have, he put That's gold cool. in there. And I, I wanted to take this out of the bag so you can see it a little better without the reflection. Mm. But you can see the, the gold ink he used. Oh, it's I just, love that. It's just so cool, man. I just love this cover. So we're really thrilled. We have a, a um, and by the way, we're working on, uh, some other really fantastic artists to join us on issue three, um, which which is done. But um, uh, when addiction three? That's a great question. So <laughs> the one thing I will say is that addiction the, the addiction number three. You will not have to wait as long as you did for the addiction number two for number three. And we appreciate your patience with that. A couple covers. Yeah, it, we're so, really putting it putting it putting it together at the end. Yeah. Yeah, so we're uh, gonna have the addiction number three. Hey Jay, hey Jacob, um, we're gonna have the addiction number three in your hand. Well, ad, ad, on VV sooner than later. But let, let's just talk also about we're trying to you know balance between direct market physical copies and 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 the digital copies. So the number one digital cop num, number one direct market uh, physical copy will be in July in comic stores. We're going to skip a month. We're going to skip August and September should have the number two in comic stores. And number three should be uh, September, October, November in comic stores. So that's the, that's the physical. The digital copies, as soon as we get number two, uh, the physical uh, out of the way, um, we're going to jump back into number three, get that done digitally and have that ready for you guys. And hopefully in the next few months we'll have that. Um, and that'll be the, the, the completion of the first story arc. And I, I also, I just got to say, I... I I, I, I am very thankful to everybody out there, but I also want to say a special thanks to my partner, David, who not only is just a, a fantastic person to work with in terms of the creative process, but as a partner in sharing in the responsibilities. And there are many for an independent publisher like what we're doing right now um, that it's, 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 been, it's been amazing. Like you guys, if anybody out there is ever thinking about making a comic book of their own, there's a lot of work involved. It really is a lot. I think you're right, Vincent. Thank you for saying that. I think we both have about three part-time jobs in, a, in addition to everything else in our lives. Sometimes. But you know what? One more thing about covers, if I may. I think what we've tried to get all of our artists to come along with us in is like, let's have every cover suggest a story all in itself. And it might be literally the story that's inside, or it might be a moment that's um, metaphorical for the story. And, you know, we've got some great, great artists um, for all the covers, uh, in addition to the wonderful storytelling that is um, mature and emotional and sophisticated that Claudia contributes. Um, so, I mean, we're really, really like trying to make this be a story you'll remember from the cover to the back cover. Nice. I love that. And uh, I know I'm not alone in this, but I think all of us are waiting to get our hands on addiction to physicals. Yes. Let, let, let me, let my me collection tell you here, number one, and <laughs> itching to get my hands on number two. <laughs> so here's what we have planned for San Diego Comic Con in July. We're going to not only have our number one New York variants, whatever we have, we'll, bring, we'll be bringing that. We'll also have some of the Lux copies that were not at New York Comic Con. The foil the uv and the two embossed copies which are really cool very rare we'll have some virgin copies also left over i want that robot cat, cat <laughs> cover physical cgc all right slim we're going to work on that but but let me just tell you what we are going to do also uh, a friend of mine who helped us come up with the metal covers he is going to help us to put together if everything goes according to plan a very small limited edition run physical run of 
the addiction number two for San Diego Comic-Con. And we'll, whatever we have left over, we'll go to New York Comic-Con and maybe we'll do a different one for New York. But we are definitely trying our best to have a physical copy for San Diego. It's going to be very limited, but I think it'll be really fun. Ooh, just, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> just keep in mind, please, that was originally the plan for New York Comic-Con to have that edition. But we're also trying to mm, squeak some out for San Diego, too. So yeah. if you miss it in San Diego, you'll have it in New York. Here's yeah, a, right. a great comment I'd like you guys to, to read. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Vivi that's sights cool. to see. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's great. Cool. I can fuse yeah. your own after my own heart. <laughs> a woman after my own heart. Um, yeah. I also am a huge yeah, fan of travel and finding the, the local spots that are the best. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I think we have to add that to the next letters page. That's true. Um, and so, you know, we have Grimaldi's in the first issue. The Mila is not a physical location, but in our comic book it is. We, you'll see it branded in, our, in the second issue. Um, but we, we have... Um, we have a great uh, relationship with Mila. It's a frozen soup dumpling company. And if you use the code VV15, you'll get 15% off um, on your order of, of soup dumplings. And you can learn how to eat soup dumplings the way uh, Nikki and Enzo <laughs> eat them in a very sexy uh, manner. Um, and then issue number three, I'm going to share something with you guys. Uh, issue number three is uh, tied into my favorite coffee shop in New York City. It's called Culture. They have several locations, and uh, I'm not the hugest coffee drinker, uh, but they've had the best chocolate chip cookies. If you ever go into culture, don't bother with their oatmeal or any of these snickerdoodle shit. Just get the chocolate chip cookie. You'll be blown away. Cookie and, good. And, 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 and cookie good. Um, and, but, but, but seriously, uh, I walked into culture, and I talked to the manager, Johnny, and I said, Johnny, this is what, I, what we're doing. And I love your shop. Would you guys like to be involved? And he said, absolutely. I said, great. I have no idea what the promotion will be in store for culture, but I think it'll be some type of addictive addiction coffee. You know, uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a double shot of espresso. I don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to work on that very soon. I know it would be really intense, but if you, I mean, I don't know if they like sell their own beans or anything, but there's been people in our, tied to our community that like Mumbot has done something. Um, Brock with the Fiches has done something where they've, created their own coffees and like VD fans oh, of their stuff. It. Like if you guys had an addiction branded bag of coffee, people would go ape. <laughs> I, I, I will work on that. Video the other day, we, we won't, we won't uh, take any sponsorship from illegal drugs, but from legal addictions, we're all in. <laughs> right. Right. Um, we, we were actually even thinking of making some type of uh, Mr. Licorice uh, candy. So we'll, we'll see if that ever comes Oh, that's through. so clever. And, and I am working on trying to find out how we can get uh, made-to-order addiction jackets. So I, a lot of people want to buy this jacket. This is a one-of-one. One. My mm -hmm. wife gave me for Valentine's Day, and I'm still tickled pink about it. But we're, we're looking into how we can get these designed and made. And we're also working on a merch section for the addiction.co if anybody out there still hasn't gotten their physical copies you can buy them on the addiction.co um and uh we can um eventually we'll have some t-shirts that are being designed by mondo and we're gonna have some really cool stuff available as well yeah i would love to have an addiction t-shirt i i that'd me be really too. Cool. me yeah. too hoodies t-shirts maybe even a tank top i don't know that'd be exciting um, there was another question up here. Let me scroll back up really quick. There we go. <laughs> David, why don't you take this one? Oh, uh, we have a 60 page Bible with other places to go, other characters, other locations. Some of them, even in what you might say is like, feels like a slightly different genre. Um, so we really see this as a universe, and we really could do this as long as there's support for it. Addiction right? universe. We're off, we're off to a very good start, right? And we're lucky that we're off to a very good start because that's rare, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, for 10 people that put out their own comic, you know, one might, you know, one in 10 might Connect. pay for itself, and one in 100 might become The Walking Dead. So, you know. We're lucky. So there's many, many stories. So, and by the way, just so we all are very clear, the first story arc is three issues. And then we will start a second story arc. 
Uh, so we'll have a three issue series for the addiction um, and uh, we'll be introducing, I'll, I'll give you guys a little tidbit about number three. You'll get a much better feel for who the big bad is for Nikki. And um, yeah, yeah, Josh, we're working on it. We'll, we'll get it done. Addiction apparel, please. I, I think we need a, um, an, an addiction bikini. I think <laughs> Let's go. Or, or, or for David, we need to get an addiction speedo. <laughs> Um, master speedo, <laughs> master speedo. That's, I mean, it, it does give you guys a lot of, of room to grow, um, and keep the story continuing because as we all know, there's, there's so many addictions in life. I mean, it just, there's so many places you can tell, take with a story and, um, and so many things that people can relate to. And, and that's, what's also really interesting and unique about your guys' book that I think we all enjoy. Um, um good yeah. reading. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, every character in the book is addicted to something, at least something, maybe a couple of somethings. Right. We're interested in that, and we're interested in exploring that as a source of drama and comedy and danger. And we're also interested in it in a source of heroism, because no one wants to be a slave to an addiction, and Nikki's mm. fighting that. Well, it's sad. also important to note we're not trying to glorify drugs in any way, shape, or form. We, uh, Nikki's fighting the drug war in a very unique way. Um, and I just saw somebody said they want a Mr. Licorice jumpsuit. That's cute, I think. What a great <laughs> idea! Oh my gosh, oh, I would yeah. wear I would wear that Halloween in that jumpsuit. You need to have. You've had the Nikki's at at your cons. You need to have somebody come dressed up as Mr. Licorice in the jumpsuit. Well, we also had a Bet Noir, uh, Skyla, who who is our operations manager here at Metropolis, she came up and she even did a prop of the uh, um, lollipop, the jagged lollipop, which is featured on the Labrada cover. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we definitely need a Mr. Licorice. I, I keep thinking if I could only convince my friend Mike Carbonaro to dress up as Mr. Licorice, I think that might be perfect. There oh. was... <laughs> We hear, so, we hear you. <laughs> you know how we have um, the AR function in um, in the app with the comic, you know, books and what we can we can put them in front of us and with other things. And um, I was in the, the Discord voice chat with all these guys that are huge fans afterwards. And um, one of our friends, uh, Vivi Wheels, had such a clever idea. He's like, I'm so excited. He had like gotten secret rares and everything. He's got a huge collection already. He's like, I'm going to go down to my corner liquor store market and I'm going to buy a bunch of ring pops and I'm going to put them on my hand and I'm going to put an AR picture with the comic book with the ring pops next to me. That's awesome. Isn't that like, it's just so cool how it adds an extra level of fun for, for yeah. us as collectors of, of your, of your work. Please share these photos, friends. Yes. Like yeah. we got two pages of a letter page scheduled for issue two. So Speaking Fair. of sharing, um, also want to shout out Claritza, who is yeah. well known in our community for her amazing, amazing cosplays, and she's done several really good ones of of Nikki Tino. So yeah, I, I can um, share that with Dave. Uh, she she did this really beautiful one where she's wearing the dress that Nikki's wearing uh, at the at the dream sequence with the soup dumplings at the uh, end of the story. She's wearing a black dress with a red sash, and she's sitting there reading the addiction number two while the addiction number one the covers there as well and i just i was Great. see this smile this is really you know, like i got this yeah it's, it's on, on, it's I, on, it's she on her instagram as well but it's on x I, yeah. but she also has an instagram i believe so it might be there but yeah, yeah you got to share it with him she's she's amazing she she'll just as a um electra um princess leia i mean you name it a female wolverine and she nails it she like does the costumes herself and and she puts them with collectibles and it's really amazing and she really looks like nikki in the picture she, does. Like, she, she really, really does yeah. yeah female uh, right now dave she'll have to do next Did you guys yeah. hear that the ball character is going to become a silver surfer character in the ff yeah. Yeah. A huge FF fan. Vincent knows my story, going all the way back to uh, being in school and meeting Peter Laird before he did Turtles, and he was a mini comic artist that I bought mini comics from, and I was lucky enough to buy the original uh, Doom and Surfer and Galactus story from him. Oh wow! From Peter Laird. That's yeah, it's cool. very fun. Wow. Yeah. I'm such a nerd. Yeah. We all are. God bless fans. <laughs> hey, VV fan bam, welcome to the show. 
Nice to see you, Fam Bam. She'll be in San Diego, so nice. yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a great crew there. Um, gosh, there's probably San Diego's a little harder, right? Because um, those tickets can be pretty hard to get, but yeah. Um, there's people that are even just in the area that if they know that we're all getting together after the con, they'll drive down just for that, just to get to meet up with us after. So yeah. I'm sure there'll be a good crew around. We, we did a, an event last year. Oh gosh, there was probably at least 150 people. So it'll yeah. be fun. Wow, nice really? Wow. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. We all went to a bowling alley. It was great. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I, I, I want to do that. <laughs> that it's like fun. Blast. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So I have another question <clears throat> talking about fandoms. Um, it's actually a two-part question. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this on X, but we have um, very strong fan bases for certain artists. And Peach Momoko is one of those mm. huge mm. fan bases of uh, collectors on, on our app. And they <laughs> um, wanted to know if she'd ever be considered to do a cover. Considered? She was, she was already considered and i i asked her i asked her twice already um i asked her at new york comic-con two years ago i asked her uh at lake como last year um she's incredibly busy she's incredibly sweet and amazing person and her her husband is also fantastic um and i here's what i'm gonna say let's do a grassroots approach to her everybody bombard her ex asking her to do a, co a cover for the addiction that's what we need to do to get her in there she's she's amazing i'd love to have her on board um i am i am reaching out to another artist who's got a different style but i i, I think could be also very uh um cool for us um so if we all reach out to peach momoko and tell her i think maybe that'll do the trick so everybody out there let's get on that i'm pretty let's sure she's Momoko. she's pretty aware of um of, of the VV community, because when we go to the cons, we like bombard her, her booth when she's there. And mm. you know, um, I, I'm David, you uh, has, you know, spoken with her and everything as well. And so, you know, maybe, maybe guys, we can, we uh, can do something here. We might be able to make it happen. <laughs> uh, I need, I need a bunch of VV members to fly over to Japan and <laughs> camp out outside her house. <laughs> um, here's another one. <laughs> You, you know, oh, Scotty, Scotty, yeah. Scotty Young, he's great. Um, and he's always at C2E2. I'll reach out to him when I'm there. I wasn't sure. Um, I thought it was a little too cutesy for what we're doing. But I was also thinking about an artist named Chrissy Zulo, who does a similar type of uh, style. If you think that's what you guys want, uh, we'll see what we can do. I, I would know. think he's probably the number two fan base for, for VV collectors. Oh, Scotty Young? Really? They love Scotty Young, yes. Well, He's a I'm really a, nice guy. I'm <laughs> always uh, into the road less traveled as a specialty, you know? Uh, when you see his style, you know that's probably not what the interior of the book is like. You yeah. know, that's a specialty. That's a prize. That's a gem that you're getting in addition to what's inside. So, yeah, I, I've bought covers purely only for a, an artist like Scotty Young, Peach Momoka, Momoko, um, Art Adams, you know, to name someone from a, you know. From I know a, Art pretty well, and I've always yeah. thought about asking him, but oh my God, he's he's about, I think, four years deep in commissions. And he, well, gets, he gets like twenty to $50,000 for commissions right now. Okay. No, I, I've seen, I've, I've been talking to him for years, and I've just like, buy, if he does, if he draws Ben Grimm, I, I buy it. <laughs> nice, nice. So the second part of this question was, this is for each of you, who is your dream cover artist for an addiction copy? Wow. Wow. There are, there are a lot of people I'd love to have uh, do a cover. When I think of, of modern people, like there's a cover artist that I, I had a promise from last year, but it didn't come to be. I'm going to work on it when I'm back in Lake Como this year. If, if he's set up, I would love to get uh, Milo Manara to do a cover. That would be absolutely fantastic. If, if you don't know who he is, he's one of the greatest artists in Italy. And um, that would be amazing. Um, I'd also, I would kill to have Jim Lee or Todd McFarlane do a cover. Uh, speaking uh, of this, sort of in the same realm. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, um, Frank Miller, I don't think his style really lend itself to what we're doing. Uh, I, I love Frank's work, but 
that that's not I, I don't I don't think so for the addiction. But again, uh, it could uh, be. It, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it could be like the road less traveled. Like here's a Frank Miller look because it would be yeah. very different, especially with his modern style. I, yeah, I don't maybe. have a good answer for you. I mean, I we've gotten a lot of my dream people so far. Oh, it nice. Just, you know, take Amanda Connor for example. She. When we, when I was writing Doctor Strange at Marvel, she was doing a lot of Marvel comics, and I would always save hers. And the reason I saved them was because when she draws a person, the facial acting, for lack of a better word, is pristine and perfect. It's just like you always have a drama going on or a comedy going on. So I mean, she she was perfect. And there's a few other people I suggested to Vincent. It's like we're gonna, putting together the cover story. I had a few people in mind, and I won't mention their names because they were too busy and we didn't get them yet. When we get them, you'll know. So I guess the same question is to you without giving it away is who would be your dream person to do a cover? Oh. <laughs> he kind of stumped me. <laughs> um, I like... Uh, Mirka and Dolfo a lot. And that is something that would be a little off the page of the slick looking crime comic, but so human and so sexy that I think it would be beautiful. Nice. Any other any other top contenders? <laughs> I feel like Vince is like covers. pondering something right now. I want to know covers, what you're doing. For covers, I mean, I, I, there's <laughs> so many great cover artists. Um, so I'm going to wait to make the kill. <laughs> I'm looking around my my office, and it's a, you know David Finch might be good for an upcoming villain in in our second series. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Mark Texier is a great artist. Um, uh, there's there's so many great artists out there, and uh, it would be really exciting to have. Um, oh, um, I'm I'm working working feverishly on Pablo Villa Lobos, so we might be able to get Pablo on board uh, sometime for the second series. I think I don't think he'll be on the first, or maybe if we end up doing a collected edition of of the first story arc, maybe we get a cover from Pablo. Um, he's really fantastic. Uh, I'd love to get Sam Keith would be somebody, but I heard he just stopped drawing. I can't believe oh. it. Stop drawing. So I'm not sure that would work, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of great artists out there. Oh God. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans, but there's, there's one artist that I'm working with right now on a cover for us who is very popular, but I think he'll become very well known to the BB community. His artwork is ridiculous. It's, <laughs> Unbelievable. In fact, I'll show you a piece. You guys can try to figure I'm going to cover his name. I'll show you a piece. I'm going to cover the name so you don't know who the artist is, but he did this. And if you can just see the detail in that piece, um, he's going to be doing an addiction cover for us. I'm working on it right now with him. And I think it'll be. That's, that's just a matter of when, right? Yeah, it's a matter of when. I, I hope. Yeah. So. Very uh, so, listen, If you're listening to us, you know, blah, 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 along with about our favorite artists, send us yours. So yeah. here's a good question. Right. This is from Tactics. Could do a VV exclusive created by a VV fan voted by the community just for the digital. Hmm, that's a great idea. I mean, we did that contest that Mondo put together on X where people did their own covers and stuff, and that was really fun. Um, yeah, David and I will talk about that. I, I like that idea uh for for the vv release or maybe it maybe it's going to be an ultra rare or something like that but uh we also I, I will share one other thing um for number three uh for everybody out there we're going to have the another first cover ever uh andrew wilson is going to be doing a cover for us I'm so excited and he, for is, that. he is an extraordinary artist and i couldn't believe i watched him drawing something uh, in the office uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was completely blown away by how good he is. It is extraordinary, and I cannot wait. He's been, we took photos early this week, posed, 
for different cover ideas, and then he came back with a whole fresh new idea, and I, he's going to hopefully have it for us by the end of the month, and it'll be, it'll be really exciting to see. I'm in line too. He said he was making me something. So don't you forget oh, okay. about me, Andrew. Right on, right on. Right on. <laughs> I'm obviously way down the list. Mine's just for no, fun. No, no, you're not. <laughs> and a many right. talents and a secret weapon of the family. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. He really so, is. I have one last question and then I think we'll wrap up. But have there been any discussions or um, plans or anything um, in the realm of 3d collectibles of mm. say your characters i am i i didn't mention to david uh it, it slipped my mind but i started talking to a friend of mine about doing a digital sculpture for us a physical and a digital sculpture and um i'm waiting to hear back from vivi about this because the digital we want to release on vivi uh but i think we very well could be looking at something in the next few months as long as i can just shake some time loose to, to, to follow up and keep on top of it. Again, um, everything takes a lot of time. You know, uh, mm -hmm. this is my second podcast of the day, second interview. So this oh, is, wow. Uh, Thank you. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's been great. Uh, but a digital collectible, um, uh, excuse me, a digital sculpture, I think will be extraordinary. Yeah, people uh, are, are so loving the that. thought. Um, yeah. And uh, okay. again, I want to shout out the crew. We've got Several of your top yeah, addiction holders in the chat. Uh, I've got of even just the newly released number two, like seventy plus copies each. It's unbelievable. insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, like, I talk about this with people, and when I do, I, I get choked up. I, I don't know how to put it into words enough. Um, it's a dream come true. It is. I, I just I, the main goal for us and. and uh, of course, we'd love to see lunch boxes and movies and TV shows and all that stuff. But the main part for us is we wanted to craft a story that people would enjoy reading. And when I hear that from people, um, I'm, I know I'm speaking for David as well. Uh, it touches our hearts. It means so very much to us. And I, we don't take it for granted. And, and we're, we're feverishly going to be working on the next series um and um, and i know that somebody out there wanted to be a villain in the in the comic book uh we're we're gonna, we're gonna try to he's in the chat like <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know i didn't want to spill the beans uh but we're, we're gonna work on that and um yeah and addiction collectibles um the the my friend who i was talking to can do a digital as well as a, a physical uh i think he said it's gonna be in porcelain i'm not sure i got to look again and see if i could find that while we're wrapping up here and maybe i could share that with you so i think it was um yeah 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 this is this is uh yeah po a poly uh do a high polygon count that's going to be for the the digital and the physical it's going to be something i think uh ceramic gray is what it's going to be ceramic gray for the wow physicals. we got a lot on our plates if, uh, yeah. if somebody if you just find somebody to run comic connect in metropolis i could dedicate all the time in the world to this be great. <laughs> at least they're good problems um here's one Absolutely. other comment that i think you'll love osman is oh, going to wow. do a reading oh i love the last one thanks wasn't that fun yeah uh so yeah, shout out to him so cool yeah, yeah. Oh, if, and if you guys can let us know when that's gonna happen who takes the time to put their energy into making something of their own you know you expand what we started and it's doesn't even like belong just to us anymore it belongs to all of us yeah, yeah well and it's great. nice right because you know seeing seeing all these comments and everything and um i feel like that gives you guys a little bit of drive right you know like Absolutely. you're tired you've been working your butts off but it's like man we gotta we gotta keep going we've got these people <laughs> that need us <laughs> Yeah, uh, and nobody well, in my story. neighborhood knows about this. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a couple of people that follow me, and they actually go, "You did some kind of graphic novel." <laughs> yeah, yeah, <There's> a few. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. guys. Well, I think we'll call it a day here. I'll let you guys. It's gosh, getting close to hopefully almost close to quitting time for you guys on your Friday. No, not even. Not even close. I got um, a mountain of stuff to do. <laughs> I got another well, meeting in five minutes, but this is great. <laughs> thank you, everyone, and thank you for putting it all together. Oh, yes, Magic, thanks so much. You're awesome, and you've been just such a 
a huge advocate for us and and you do such a great job with the with all your posts and your promotion uh, interviews and I had a great time in, interviewing with you at WonderCon thank you very much it, it means a lot yeah uh, likewise I, I love spending the time with you guys it's been great getting to know you I look forward to getting to know you more and more so really appreciate you guys and it, this was really fun Let's had a great time place in uh, San Diego yeah, and let's see how crafting goes tomorrow. Good luck to everybody yeah. that's going for the craft. I hope you're able to get one. And uh, let's make sure we share it on socials and, and share the love. Peace out. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.